Oh yeah, it's a bit of new stuff this week. Um, looking at parallel and perpendicular lines, just building on top of the stuff that we did last week. Um, great work getting all that done, by the way. Uh, lots of you work really, really hard, which is great. So let's keep that going as we work through some new stuff today. So the first thing is to, I've opened up with this statement that is two lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. I want you to um, reach into your brain and take that, that definition that parallel means something like uh, two lines that never meet or two lines at the same distance apart and instead replace it with parallel means same gradient. So two lines are parallel, they've got the same gradient. I'm going to say that about 50 times probably during this video. Two lines are parallel, they've got the same gradient. Okay, so I've got line A and line B. I've got two pairs of coordinates and I need to show that they're parallel. And if you remember rightly, parallel means they've got the same gradient. So all I'm going to do is find the gradient of these two lines. And if the, those two lines uh, have the same gradient, then those two lines are parallel. So um, we'll do our x1, y1 thing on this one and our x2, y2 thing on this one for line A. So 10 take 1 over 5 take 2 is 9 over 3, which is 3. So that's line A. Line B, same thing. So 20 take 5 over 3 subtract negative 2. That is 15 over 5, 3. And we know from before, of course, that if two lines have the same gradient, then they are most definitely parallel. So a little um, move forward is to look at which of those lines are parallel to y equals 3x plus 4. Well, the answer is all of them, because if you remember in y equals mx plus c, the coefficient of x, the value here, that I'm circling here is always the gradient. And that's when it's written in the form y equals mx plus c. So here the gradient of all of these lines is 3. If I drew all of these lines on the graph, they would all be parallel to y equals 3x plus 4. Note here what's more important is that the term on the end tells us nothing about the line being parallel. The term on the end is just the y-intercept. That's just going to pull the graph up and down the y-axis. It doesn't have any relevance to whether or not the line is parallel or not. So if I say to you, find me a line that's parallel to y equals 3x plus 4, you can name any line at all. You could write any of these things, right? And they would all be totally fine. But probably the smartest answer would be the bottom one, because the bottom one is the general answer. The c can be any value, fraction, decimal, positive, negative, or whatever. So any line that's parallel to y, because some, sometimes you'll be asked for any line that you can think of that's parallel to y equals 3x plus 4. And you could give anything, you could give 3x plus 7, 2, 9, 4, but I suppose the best answer would be to write, well, I know it's just y equals 3x plus c. Okay, so let's try and use that for a different type of question. So this question says, uh, well, actually, it doesn't, it's not a question, it's also doesn't say anything. This one's a question. Find the equation of any line that's parallel to these. So we remember that parallel means, that's right, same gradient. So a gradient of this line is 5. So if I want a line that's parallel to this, I could write anything. But my smartest probably, probably is to write y equals 5x plus c, where c is any value. Similarly for this one, I want to find a line that's parallel. Well, I know that the gradient of this line is 2. So I know that the gradient of my new line has to also be 2 plus some constant on the end that could literally be anything. This one's a little bit tricky because it's not in conventional form. It's not in y equals mx plus c. It's the other way around. But we can still interpret this as our gradient here. If you wanted to, you could write this the other way around. So that bit came first, if that helps. Um, but the gradient is still negative 3. So we could write y equals negative 3x plus c. The last one is a little bit trickier because it's not in the form y equals mx plus c. And it's not even got y as the subject. So I need to move this whole thing around to deal with this one before I can even think about what's parallel to it. So I'd probably take 6x off both sides. So that would get me if I take the 6x first and leave the 12. And then I divide both sides by 3. And that will leave me with y equals, and then uh, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2x. 
uh, plus four, but I remember that I don't really need the plus four for the purpose of this part of the question. So that I can turn into that in the form y equals mx plus c. So parallel to that will be anything in the form y equals negative 2x plus some c value on the end. Okay, notice the difference between this question and the next one. This one, though, says it has to be parallel to the line, but it has to pass through only one pair of point, set of points. Um, and it says the equation, right? This time there is no ambiguity. Before, you could give any equation. This time there is only one equation that's parallel to this and will pass through the point zero three. So let's set this up. We're going to use these coordinates to substitute into here to find uh, the parallel line. First of all, we're going to note that the gradient of this line is 6. And if the gradient of this line is 6, then the gradient of the line that's parallel will also be 6. Because parallel means same gradient. So this is parallel to that. Except it's also got to go through 0, 3. So what we'll do is we'll substitute in 0 and 3. We've got an x value and a y value. So we'll put those in. y is 3 x is 0. So y is 3 and x is 0. In they go. 6 lots of 0 being 0. 3 uh, equals 0 plus c. Well then c is 3. And if I chuck that back into my equation it is y equals going to be y equals 6x plus 3. Now you might have already known that was going to happen there because it, 0, 3 actually, if you imagine the graph, is actually going to be the y-intercept, right? 0, 3 would, would be there. Um, so actually, we already knew that because that was 3 that it was going to be y equals 6x plus 3. But if you want to work through it every time, that's also fine. Because this time you haven't got the y-intercept because you haven't got um, an x-coordinate of 0. So you can't just go, this is y equals 3x plus 7. That just simply doesn't work. So let's do what we did last time. Parallel. Parallel means same gradient. Gradient of this line is 3. It's in the form y equals mx plus c. I can just read off the gradient. So parallel to that will be y equals 3x plus something that we're going to figure out. And we'll figure it out by substituting these coordinates in. I've got an x coordinate and a y coordinate, so the y coordinate in here my x coordinate in here and I'll use that to figure out C. 7 equals 6 plus something well you can tell by inspection that C is 1. Chucking back in there therefore this is y equals 3x plus 1. I can tell that this is right as well I should have done this before. This says in English the y coordinate is 3 lots of the x coordinate add 1. Well if you look over here the y coordinate 7 is 3 lots of the x coordinate 6 plus 1. I know it's right. Let's do another of these. If you want to stop and just give this a go yourself, that's probably a good idea. Anyway, parallel means same gradient. The gradient of this line is 2. It's in the form y equals mx plus c. So, y equals 2x plus c. I've got my x and y coordinates here that I can substitute in to find the value of c. You'll get very used to doing this. 7 equals 2 lots of 5 plus c. 7 equals 10 plus c. I can see by looking at this that c is going to have to be negative because 10 adds something to give me 7. It's going to have to be negative. Um, so I'll go through the working out and I'll take 10 off both sides here. 7 is subtract 10 is negative 3. And I know then that this is y equals 2x subtract 3. Um, I know it's right as well. I can give this a quick check. The y coordinate 7 is 5 lots. Uh, this is 2 lots of the x coordinate, 2 lots of 5 is 10, take away 3, which does indeed give me 7. Again, have a go at this one, um, stop the video, uh, and then if you're not that confident yet, just, just give this uh, another example a go. So remember this is uh, reversed this time, so maybe best helpful to think of this the other way around, in the form of y equals negative 5x plus 4 where the gradient of the line is negative 5. And you can probably tell that from the start. So uh, parallel to that will be y equals negative 5x plus c. As before, figure out the values, 
we're substituting the coordinates. So we've got 17 equals negative 5 lots of negative 3 plus C. So 17, equal, that's going to equal 15 plus C. And we can tell by looking at this, by inspection, 15 has something to give me 17. C is 2. So if I chuck that back in, I'm looking at y equals negative 5 lots of uh, x plus 2. And it works, negative 5 lots of that, give me 15, plus 2 does indeed give me 17. Right, so there is one other possible scenario that occurs where the um, thing you're given isn't in the form y equals mx plus c, and you've got to do some work to rearrange this. So it's difficult to tell by inspection what's parallel to that. So we haven't got it in the form y equals mx plus c, and don't fall into trap thing in the gradient 1, because you don't know until it's in the form y equals mx plus c. So I need y to be the subject. So let's move everything else around um, to make that happen. So probably take off the x, first of all. Um, so that will get me 2y subtract 1 equals negative x. And then boot the 1 off. So I've got 2y equals negative x plus 1. And then I've also got to get rid of the 2 because I want y to be the subject. So I'll divide both of these parts by 2. And that will give me y equals now that's in itself a bit awkward at this point, but dividing something by 2 is also the same as creating half. I can put a 1 there if you want to make that a little bit clearer. Um, plus a half, so it's negative a half. This line here in the form y equals mx plus c is y equals negative a half x plus a half. So now I can do the whole parallel thing. Well, the gradient of the line is negative a half, so parallel to that will be y equals negative a half x plus c. And now all I need to do is exactly the same thing as before, substitute my coordinates to find out the value of c. I've got x is 6 and y is 4, so we'll chuck those in. Negative a half times by 6 plus c. Um, I just read this as a half of 6. Half of 6 is 3. So negative a half of 6 will be negative 3. And I can solve that. Adding 3 to both sides gets me the c is 7. Chuck that back in. To find the equation of the line is y equals negative a half x plus 7. Give it a quick check that it works. Negative a half of that, well, half of that's 3, negative half of that is negative 3, negative 3 adds 7, gives me 4.